There we go, there's one. Oh, look at him chasing those fish. Have a look at this. Doesn't matter where you are, industrial port or not, nothing, nothing stops a nice, beautiful sunrise. How nice is that? 5.30 in the morning. Alrighty, we're off down to Scotland Bay and look at this sunset. Tobago tomorrow. Woohoo! What a sight. Okay, you can probably hear the engine running. That is because I am just about to head off to Tobago. My first uh, kind of serious passage. I've been in Scotland Bay overnight so that I can have a quick exit through the, uh, through the heads. And it's uh, almost six o'clock, 6 a.m. I was planning to leave a little bit earlier, but there was a lot of rain and um, I was a bit concerned about the possibility of fishing nets out there in the dark. So uh, here we are leaving a little bit later, but that's okay. It's probably gonna be a motor sail most of the way, if not all of the way, uh, which is a bit of a bugger, but that's okay. So I did this anchoring last night in the dark and uh, I've probably ended up a little bit closer than I would have if I'd done it in the day, which is another reminder that um, your depth perception changes depending on what time of day it is. But anyway, just about to pull up the anchor and uh, get underway. So we'll just go forward a little bit. Then up to the bow, got the dinghy up on deck here. First time I've had it upright on the stand and it seems pretty, pretty firm. As it happened, I didn't need to go forward. Take this uh, snubber off. No, no, I think we've, uh, I think we've released. Yes, you can hear it uh, speeding up a little bit. That means it's less weight overall. And here we go. Here comes the uh, here comes the anchor, nice and clean. All right, that's done. Beautiful Scotland Bay, and we're off to Tobago. Goodbye, Scotland Bay. Okay, you might be wondering how I am feeling about doing my first uh, uh, kind of serious passage. It's gonna take between 10 and 12, maybe 14 hours, possibly, depending on wind. Um, anyway, I'm a little bit anxious, if I'm to be honest. I'll be fine once I'm underway and, you know, settling into it. But obviously, it's been a while. This will be my longest passage in four and a half years. I'm doing it single-handed. And it's about, altogether, it's about 70 miles. So, it's not a huge passage, but it's also not insignificant. So I am feeling a little bit anxious, but the breeze is nice. Look, if it was a really sunny day, I say this racing as well, if it was a really <clears throat> sunny day, I'd be feeling uh, different. So once we're out there, we get a little bit of blue sky, we settle into it, it'll be good. This is Boca uh, de Monis, I think they pronounce it, or Del, Boca Del Monis. We'll confirm that later. It's a misty, it's a misty, 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 cloudy day in Scotland Bay. It's so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boats. If you include me, last night in, in uh, Scotland Bay. 
Here we go, we're going to turn right in a sec. I'll just have to look this up on Navionics. Give me a sec. The last of Scotland Bay. And we're leaving Trinidad for Tobago. It's all the same country, but they're 70 miles apart. A little bit of swell. Whew, big breath. Look at that, we're sailing into, uh, motoring into some blue sky. Wow, last time I went past here was arriving into Trinidad. Venezuela in the, in the distance there. It's a coolish morning. I mean, it's probably 28 degrees. You'd be thinking, wow, how can you say that's a coolish morning? But yeah, there's a little bit of a breeze, which is nice. We wanted some breeze so we can put the sails out. But it's only four knots, five knots apparent. All right, I've got to go up to the bow and uh, close this anchor locker prob properly. But let's wait till we get through this little bit here before, before I go up there. Oh, we've got a nice rainbow there. Nice. Okay, let's get this main up. Actually, the wind's behind us now. Well, I think as we swing around the corner, that will uh, that will change somewhat. The beautiful coastline of Trinidad. Look at that rainbow, beautiful. And I'm already starting to feel a little bit better. Venezuela in the distance there, just starting to be lit up by the sun, looking beautiful. So if the rain stays away, it should be a good day. And Grenada is this way, so this is north. Okay, that's a nice wind angle now. Let's see if we can uh, give you a look at the wind indicator. I've got two reefs in, which I'll probably pull out in a while. And that's the other thing I need to do is uh, loosen off that lazy bag. That's a, that sail's a little bit too full in the head for my liking. She's getting on a bit, and uh, but she's okay for now. I'll pull the jib out as well now, I think. So I do need just to go up on deck, just to check a few things. Yep, everything's uh, looking pretty good up here, except for the, uh, oh, it's the, uh, let's just release this a little bit. There we go, that was just a little bit too, the anchor was just a little bit too tight. And that should close. And now, there we go. She's closed. The jib sheets all look free. So let's uh, come back and pull that out. That'll be interesting to look back on. It's probably looking a bit tentative there. I was just going to drop the traveller car, but yeah, the wind is, uh, we'll probably have to wait until we get around this corner for the breeze to really settle down. Let's just have a quick look at the apparent wind, etc. So we've got 4.2 knots of wind speed. An apparent wind angle is uh, 42, 40 degrees. It's probably going to be a motor sail all the way, unfortunately but I need to get up there today. Originally, I was going to, uh, I was going to stop at a lovely little bay where actually the turtles nest. 
at the northeastern end of uh, Trinidad, but that's not going to happen now. That was if I'd left the day before with, uh, well, yesterday actually. If I'd left yesterday morning, it was going to be a 30 mile sail, approximately 30 mile sail there. And then the next day, another 30 miles to uh, Charlottesville. But that's not happening. I've got to do it all in one go now. That's okay. Let's have a look at what speed we're doing. So we're doing about six knots motor sailing, which is about what I'd like to average. And it should take us, you know, 10, 11, maybe 12 hours. And I'd be kind of happy with that. If we can do it in 10, that'd be awesome. But I'm assuming at some point we're gonna have the current against us is my understanding based on what people have told me. But it may not be, you never know, we might, uh, we might be lucky. Woo! Big breaths. It's a big deal. I'm feeling it. I'll be okay. This is going to be a confidence booster. Either way, if I have to deal with stuff, I have to deal with stuff. And I'll deal with it. And that's where the confidence builds from. I don't want to wish uh, some challenging times on myself. But that's where you do grow, for sure. That's where it all stems from. So whatever we have to deal with, we will deal with. And then at the same time, it's, uh, it's exciting. We are doing it. We are literally on our way to Tobago. It's up and down. It's probably going to be patchy until we turn the corner up here, which is a long way yet. But we're doing 5.7 through the water. And uh, we were doing 6, 6 before. That's at 1,400 revs. Oh, actually, about 1,600 revs. I'd like to pull the Jenny out, but uh, the uh, apparent wind angle is yeah, its dropping below 30 too often. So again, we're probably going to have to wait and see what happens, see how the breeze settles in. So at this stage, we'll just, have, we'll just keep the main up. We have a, uh, a Venezuelan fishing boat. We're doing about the same speed. So we'll have a little bit of company for a while. That's going to be nice. Raga's suggestion was to sail as far as Maracas and then head over to uh, a straight line to Tobago. Wubba's advice was a little bit different, was to go further north, almost to the, uh, the top of Trinidad, and then head across. So I'm not sure what I'll do. I'll see how the uh, current feels, see what wind direction we've got. If it's a nice sailing angle, once we get to Maracas, which is about 12 miles away, I may do that. This Venezuelan boat is going just a little bit faster than us. I think I'll bring the Jenny out. We've got nine knots, so we must have a little bit of uh, current here now. This true wind and, and uh, apparent wind is the same. So I forgot to film this, sorry. But we've got some Jenny out, and I'm going to let some more out. That'll help our speed overall motor sailing. We will be generating some apparent wind, which uh, increases the flow over the sail, which means more speed. But we haven't got much wind at the moment. The forecast is for maximum around 14 knots, and uh, that'll be nice if we get some of that, and if, if we can uh, get up to six knots with that kind of breeze, which we should, depending on current, um, it'll be nice to get the engine off and just sail. Anyway, in the meantime, We'll let a little bit more uh, Jenny out. So I can do this with simultaneously winch and ease, ease more sail out. Already feeling the heel, you can probably see that. And then we'll be able to back off the revs on the motor. We'll be able to back off the, uh, the revs on the motor just to maintain that uh, six knot speed or we can go a little bit faster if we want. Oh, but that's nice now. Just a slight heel. Go Monastrel. 
something I don't particularly like. Having to go up here, there's always a little bit of a, a risk, but as long as you, you know, take all the precautions. I'll stay on this side, which I should be able to. So I'm just letting down this bag. And the mainsail can relax nicely as a result. Oops, and that's uh, just a little bit too much because I've lost the rope length. So we'll just lock that off and that will look a lot better, I am sure. Oh, you know what? We haven't got the main up high enough, that's the problem. Yeah, so we need to do that. Okay. What I've done is I've raised the main up to where it should be. And you can see it's nowhere near as full of the head anymore. Looks much better. That's with two reefs. So apparent wind angle, it's fluctuating between 50 and 60 something. And wow, we are doing 6.2 knots, 6.4 speed over ground. Wind is now eight knots. Let's have a look on Navionics and see what we're doing over ground, which is the most important one, obviously. So speed on Navionics was uh, 7.3 over ground. So, ah, and just as I say that, the apparent wind angle has uh, dropped below 30. We've got it, we've got it actually backwinding. Bugger, 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 bugger. That's not good. Let's give it just a little bit. Let's give it a few seconds. I spoke too soon. But it does look as though there's something... Might be just a little bit of an illusion. But breeze-wise on the water, I can see something on the water up here, but it may not be breeze. There's a little bit of swell out there. You'd probably call that maybe a metre. A metre, maybe a little bit more. Probably a metre. So we've dropped down to 5.2 now. Yeah, that's frustrating. Remember I did say before that we might have to wait up until this uh, headland way up here before we get a steady, a steady breeze. But this is, just, this is just a little local breeze, obviously. It wasn't predicted on windy. It, I think it's just way too difficult for them to accurately forecast, you know, in these little micro areas. That was looking good just momentarily. Now, should I feel that now? <sighs> let's wait just a couple of minutes. Let's see if, uh, let's see if it shifts back again. Well, I'm gonna cook some breakfast. Um, the oats have been soaking for some time already, so they're ready to uh, just finish off. Here we go, the breeze is, uh, yep. There we go. That breeze I thought I saw on the water was I don't want to speak too soon, but it appears that, uh, yeah, it's swung around again. We've now got 30, 30 apparent, which is not quite enough, but if this hangs in, if this hangs in, it'll be nice. So it was just that little, it was just that little patch there, going through there. Venezuela's definitely getting smaller, and we are, uh, with this breeze again, we're starting to match the the little Venezuelan fishing boat there again. Yeah, we've got 50, 54 apparent now. That's this one. Oh wow! And we've got nine knots. So let's back off on the uh, let's back off on the throttle. Let's utilise this wind. I did hear a couple of uh, doors opening and closing, so I'll just go and check that. Oh, and also, I haven't got the uh, the stove gimbaled. Yeah, so the mains are looking pretty good there. I think I'll leave those two reefs in. Just, just for safety. Oh yeah, this, the, uh, the porridge had, had slid a little bit. So we just need to uh, gimbal this. And for those that don't know, that means the, uh, the stove swings. And we need a bit of a counterweight on this side because of the weight difference. So what I'll do, although, what I can do. Yeah, that's better. We'll put it there. And then the other thing we need to do is uh, lock off these cupboards. 
the shower door. Shampoo and condition has already fallen onto the ground, as you would expect. Lay a few things down here. Whoops. So I just had a look, and on Avi uh, on Navionics that is, and uh, we have 68 miles approximately. Let's call it 70 miles to go. So to do it in 10 hours, we need to average seven knots. <clears throat> the breeze has just dropped off a bit again, and we were doing just barely six knots over ground. So I'm going to up the revs again. That's, uh, that's 1,200 revs now. So they will be doing set six knots now, over ground that is. But the unknown is what will happen with the current as we progress. And uh, fingers crossed, because it seems to be in our favour now, it seems to be fairly neutral, but we've got a long way to go, a lot of hours to go, there'll be a tide change, etc., which I'm assuming affects the current. We are moving further and further away from Venezuela, slowly, slowly. I might bring the, uh, the new reel out after breakfast and set that up. Not I might, I will. But this coastline is becoming very, very, very spectacular. It's beautiful. All right, I still haven't uh, turned on the, uh, the stove top for the porridge. Uh, we've got a bit of a wind change again, it's, which is gonna be oscillating the whole time. Just went back to 30, but it's back up to 45 now. I think it's just going to be oscillating the whole time. We're down to 5.5 through the water, but we should still be doing about six over ground. All right, let's go and do the porridge. Well, the sail is just backwinded again. This is the third time, but this time I can't really see much ahead to me that looks promising. So I might have to furl it, although if I take Ragger's advice, uh, I might start to foot off to Tobago very shortly because we are just about to pass Maracas Bay, which is the, uh, the famous Maracas Beach. And it's beautiful. There it is in there. That's a beautiful beach. Very popular, especially during the, uh, the holidays. I'll show you a little bit of uh, drone footage of that. And then, I'm not sure what this one is, I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to look that up later, but that looks beautiful as well. But Maracas is the popular, is the popular one, of course, with the locals and tourists alike. That's where I got my, literally got my Maracas, Maracas from, handmade. So up here is the uh, up here is the top of Trinidad. That's the uh, eastern point, northeast point. So that's where the other bay was that I was going to go to um, later. And based on this wind at the moment, I might just I'll give it a couple more minutes. Again, it's still backwinded, which I don't like, but uh, I'll give it a few more minutes and see if it shifts again. If it doesn't. I think my gut feel is to furl and actually take Wubba's advice and uh, head further north to something Riviera, I think it's called, something or other. Let me look it up. Yeah, so Grande, Grande, Grande Riviera Bay is the bay. So I might hook a left, go further up and hook a left from there and it might be just a, a nicer wind angle, fingers crossed, to Tobago, unless the wind shifts in the meantime. And Venezuela is definitely fading into the distance there. It's cloud covered at the moment. And uh, the bottom end of Tr Trinidad is definitely fading away as well. But it's a magic day. A little bit rolly, a bit of swell. It's always hard to see that on a video. It's just a little bit confused. So although I feel all right, I'm feeling just a touch of queasiness, just a, just the slightest amount. But obviously that's because uh, I haven't done it for a while, so I think that's pretty natural. 
there's a lighthouse up on this point here. Well, I think it's a lighthouse. It's either a lighthouse or a big tree. But I think I saw a nav Navionics, a lighthouse on that one. The coastline here is just absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Really nice. Well, unfortunately, we've had to furl. A little bit disappointing. Engine revs have increased again as a result. And, uh, and we're not going quite as fast. As I mentioned before, I'm trying to keep the average up to at least six knots. Um, just to be able to get there before dark. That's the main aim. That's the, that's the goal. Presently, we are aimed right towards the tip of Tobago, the bottom tip. Um, there's not much breeze up ahead that I can see. Maybe, maybe, maybe at the end of uh, Trinidad, possibly. There's, I'm not sure whether I can see a, a line, a dark line of wind or not. But anyway, the forecast is the, the windy forecast, not surprising by the way, is, uh, is not right, not correct. I've just taken a snapshot or a screenshot of the, uh, the forecast as of 9am and it's right on the nose, right on the nose. So um, not, what, not, not what they're saying it is right now on windy. So they couldn't have got that more wrong. So, I mean, it's pleasant. I don't want to take away from that. It's a pleasant day. The scenery is, uh, as I've already mentioned, is just, you know, stunning. These forested hills or mountains, small mountains are stunning. As you can see, treed all the way to the waterline. There's uh, Maracas Bay back there again. I'm not sure how many more miles to, to uh, Grande Rivi Riviera, but yeah, that would have been a nice sail if I could have, uh, a nice trip yesterday. If I could have done that and spent the night and just did this 30 mile jump across to Tobago, that would have been perfect. If it wasn't for uh, the advice at immigration, I would have been able to do that. So that's disappointing. So another little update for you. You can see Trinidad down there in the distance, covered in rain at the moment. And here's the, uh, the north east tip again. And then here we have Tobago. And Tobago is a little bit covered in rain as well. It was heavy, heavy, heavy before. And it was interesting that the rain before literally covered Tobago from end to end it seemed and uh, as if which as you know what is what is what happens um, because it's a, a hilly land mass it uh, decided to drop most of it on Tobago so it literally sat on there for, for I don't know maybe a good half hour at least before it uh, kind of started to move on it was really interesting to watch I could uh, um, make out the outline of Tobago based on that rain cloud so we have uh, less than 40 miles to go now. Yeah, that's probably about right. That's probably about, well, to be honest, I'll have to have a look. I'll let you know. Um, but that's maybe 12, 15 miles to Tobago. I'll have a quick look and get back to you. I just had a look on Navionics and to Grand, Grande, Grande, Riviera. It's, uh, from where I am now, is 11 miles. And Tobago, to the bottom tip of Tobago it is 19 miles and we've been affected by current so I think I kind of followed Ragger's advice and uh, kind of hooked it a little bit left at Maracas and uh, at that point I was kind of in agreement with uh, Ragger that uh, when I made the decision that the extra distance I would have to travel like this extra 11 miles across here um, would probably be not worth it if uh, the wind direction was still on the nose. However, I think from Grande Riviera, I think it would be a nice, like today for example, I think it would be a nice sailing angle and I think probably, not 100% sure, but I think probably we could have made up that distance uh, because we'd be going across the current more so because I have slowed down to um, about 5.3 knots. We were doing as much as seven sometimes, 
and uh, now we've slowed down to 5.3 that's a big difference so yeah so I think um, Wubba's advice was probably the way to go I don't know 100% of course I'd have to do the trip again or at least that short run but maybe that's an experiment for uh, another time if I do it again sometime so we might be greeted um, to, to Tobago with some rain maybe the few times that I've been to Tobago and that was in the dry season it um, it does actually rain quite a bit that's Tobago you can see there the bottom tip of Tobago and uh, Navi Navionics has got me missing Tobago so I'm not sure to be honest exactly where I'm heading yet again based on uh, Navionics we were scheduled to be there around dark and I don't like to go into a, an unfamiliar anchorage in the dark of course it's not a good idea so we should at this stage get there just before dark fingers crossed all right we're getting closer still maybe two hours to go but we've definitely arrived at Tobago oh and I think there's a dolphin here again there was one playing just a little while ago oh there he is oh he's at the bow we might go for a quick walk up to the bow oh yes he's playing up at the bow oh there he is can you see him there oh that's awesome hey guys they are loving it so we're doing seven knots and they uh, they keep up easy okay looks like they've gone and the breeze is dying a little bit well it's changed direction as well you can see it's luffing out a bit so let's go back and uh, do a little bit of uh... oh, actually I think it's just gonna constantly swing So the main and the jibber down, the breeze is right on the nose. And we have about nine or 10 miles to go, I think. Lots of lovely little bays along here, and you can see they are nice and protected. Quite a few, what look like fishing villages. So single-handing a boat, even when you're uh, in confident mode, is pretty challenging really. But when you're out of practice, I mean it's, it's kind of easy to do, but just the amount of awareness that you have to have and observance that you have to have is, uh, is crazy. You've got to have the eyes of you know, two or three people. So it requires a lot of concentration. I mean, I'm doing it. But it only takes one little distraction and you might be saying to yourself, well, why, why are you filming this? Because that's in itself a bit of a distraction, but I'm used to doing the filming. I'm not so distracted by that because I've been doing that for some time now. But uh, all the other stuff, you've just got to be looking out for boats, rocks, buoys, fishing buoys. And this is the kind of time that they probably start coming out. But look at that. I want to get in there before it uh, before it gets dark, obviously. Okay, we've got about six nautical miles to go, so we've just got to make sure we keep our eye on the ball for this last little bit. Apparently, that's a really good dive spot. Lots to see, apparently. It's an interesting outcrop. Wonder how that got there. I'd say it was a lot bigger than that, and it's wow! You gave me a fright, mate. There's a big dolphin. Mate, woohoo! Wow, he's big. He's really big. Wow, <laughs> that really gave me a fright. Wow, look at the size of him. He's huge. Mate, oh, look at them. There's three. I can see three. Wow, woohoo! That is so cool. What a way to be greeted to Tobago. Oh, there he is right under there. Look at that. 
Wow. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'm doing this and keeping an eye on my surroundings. We've got the sisters over there. And then we've got these other rocks over this side. But this is too good to miss. Oh, look at him. He's a baby. Mum and calf by the looks of things. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that. Mate. Oh, wow. Wow. They are just having a ball. Well, here's another little one. got a little bit of swell here. All right, I'm gonna to have to go back and uh, change course. I don't want to. I want to stay here and watch. Wow, look how, look how close they get to the boat without touching. It's incredible. But I've got to go and get ready to turn this corner which is there. We're going in there, Pirates Bay, Charlotteville. All right. That is stunning. And I can see the mooring field up ahead there. There's two mooring fields. There's supposed to be nine in this one. And I think I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. It's possible the moorings might be full actually. That would be not good. I'm hoping to uh, get a mooring so that I can be feeling safe while I'm off, in, off to uh, Scarborough to the hospital tomorrow. I'd much rather have a mooring. Although the bay looks pretty safe. Wow, look at that. Sisters in the background. Anyway, Navionics time. Okay, change of course time, 20 degrees. So press twice. We're still doing 6.6 .6 through the water. And that log should be reasonably accurate now because I gave it a good clean up. Okay, let's get some, uh, some mooring lines organized just in case there is one available. Oh, look at that sun. Wow, that is specky. And the sun goes down. That's so pretty. First sunset in Tobago. And it's a beauty. Wow. From the mooring field, this is the view every night. Wow. That's a bit hard to take, isn't it? I don't think it's possible to have a green flash. It's my experience that it has to be a clear Horizon, yeah, no green flash there. Wow, and look at those cloud formations. Actually, that looks like a really funky city skyline almost. Almost there. A couple of miles to go. And look at these hills and cliffs. Wow. I think I'll have to get the drone out at some stage. Have a bit of a fly around here. That would be awesome to see on some drone footage. Those cliffs are quite amazing. Listen to this. Yes, we made it. We are in Tobago. Woohoo! Now look at that for a greeting. My neighbor there, you can probably just see, he kindly came over and helped me, although I'd already hooked up on uh, on one side myself. I like to try and do it myself if I can, but he came over and kindly helped anyway, which was great. Wow, look where we are. Arrived in Charlottesville, Tobago. 
Hey guys, if you made it to the end of this video, well done. I had about five or six hours of content to edit down and I really struggled to get it down to the 40 minutes uh, that this video length is. So a big thank you if you made it to the end. Join me next time. It'll be a shorter video, I promise. Uh, well, maybe not promise, but join me next time to explore a little bit of Tobago before immigration throw me out and send me back to Trinidad.